morning everyone it's 6 30 in the morning right now and i am at dorothy dix park by the sunflower fields which i mean i actually didn't come here for the sunflowers themselves so if there's any left that'd be cool but i'm pretty sure most of them have uh gone their course so today we're actually going to be attempting a picture that i saw from a guy i follow called demas put his name right here basically he does this really cool inception type photo and in order to do that we need two things we need one picture from the ground kind of facing you and with the horizon uh, kind of going above the subject second shot is a top-down drone shot shot vertical ways that way when you connect them uh, it actually still gives you that nice five by nine aspect ratio as you can see the sun is just now coming up and the reason that I actually decided to come here early in the morning is because I had a little bit more control over the lights and uh, I didn't want this picture to be blown out especially with the uh, not having as much control with the drones camera sensor so that's why we're here extra early the key to this effect is to actually find the center of all these fields so that's what I'm walking to right now the reason for that is because the more we can fit in the frame from being in the middle the more this effect is going to look surreal it's going to make it look like the fields expand for a lot longer than they actually do it's, it's absolutely just um, kind of humid this morning so my camera's getting all fucked up i did wear my yellow jersey which is kind of the color of the sunflowers and although this picture is more about the patterns uh that are here i kind of wanted the subject to stand out and really pop out of the picture so bright colors usually do that on the screen right now i'm actually putting the settings that i use for the drone to take both of these pictures it's gonna be 200 iso 1 over 240 shutter speed and i think we're gonna do i mean we're definitely gonna shoot raw uh, i think we're just gonna leave it at auto uh white balance exposure because i don't, know, don't feel like messing with that right now the sun's still pretty low all right let's send this puppy up and that's that as you can see behind me the uh, sun's starting to come out so we couldn't have actually timed this out more perfectly i'm already sweating it's hot so i'm ready to go um i'm actually i actually think i might have enough time to edit this before i have to work this morning so uh, i guess i'll see you in the computer all right folks we're gonna dive straight into this one and not waste any time first you're gonna edit the picture with the subject exactly how you want it to look then you're going to copy and paste those settings to the other pictures i have two top down drone pics right here because i didn't know which one i was gonna use next i like to compare them side by side and make little tweaks here and there to get them looking as close as possible once they look good you just export them into photoshop Next, you'll use the crop tool and actually resize the frame so that it has that nice 5x9 aspect ratio. Then you'll bring the second pick on top, rotate it and scale it how you need. And what I like to do is lower the opacity, that way I can see the picture below. This is where you'll be deciding exactly where these two pictures are going to be connecting. So try to get it just right before moving forward. Out of personal preference, I wanted to have only just one lane, so I used the stamp tool. All I had to do was hold the option button down and click where I wanted to pull my sample from. From there it was pretty easy and just used it like a brush to cover up the other four lanes. After that I used the select tool and selected a portion of the road and put it on its own layer. From here it can get a little bit tricky. You'll have to use the transforms tools skew, distort, perspective and warp in order to bend the road to create the illusion that these two pictures are actually connecting. Finally, I used the eraser tool to blend in the rest of the photos. I made sure to lower the harshness and the size of it and carefully use little splotches to blend in the bushes as well as the line along the road. As a bonus step, I used the stamp tool to recreate a lot of the sunflowers in the area. Yeah, don't believe everything you see, people. Anyway, this was the final photo. Overall, I definitely accomplished the picture that I was going for and I hope that this tutorial will encourage others to get out there and try their own versions of this. After all, it's just about thinking outside the box sometimes. Anyways, until next time, peace.